Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to teach a robot a pass statement. This will require Visual Components Premium. To get started, you can open any layout you want with a robot in the 3D world. In this case, I'm going to quickly build a layout for you. So I will start by clearing the 3D world of all components. I'll now go to the eCatalog panel, and under Models by Type, I will expand Robots, scroll down, click Visual Components, and add a generic articulated robot to the 3D world. I'll now add and connect an end of arm tool to the robot. So in my eCatalog panel, I will expand tools, select visual components, scroll down, and add this weld torch here. So I will double click the item. It knows it automatically plugged itself into the end of the robot's arm. I'll now add a workpiece positioner. So in my eCatalog panel, I will expand the workpiece positioner section, select visual components, and I will be using this item here called Workpiece Positioner, so I will drag it into the 3D world. I will now use this halo here to rotate the component in place 90 degrees and move it over here. Let's now connect the positioner to the robot as an external axis. So with the positioner selected, I will go to the Show group, select the Interfaces checkbox, and notice I can wire this interface in the robot, connect Workpiece Positioner to an interface in the positioner here. So I can just drag the circle to display a wire, and wire it to this yellow highlighted node on the robot or to the interface here in the editor. And now they're good to go. Let's go to the show group and hide the editors. And now I will add a part. So I will go to the eCatalog panel. Under Models by Type, I'll go to Products and Containers, and I'm gonna do a search for a part called SME. And it's this part here, so I'll drag it into the 3D world. And I want this part to be mounted on this fixture here in the positioner. So let's start by attaching this part to this plate. So go to the hierarchy group, click attach, and I will then point at this node and click it. So now they're attached, indicated by this blue arrow. I will now snap the part to this face. So I'll go to the tools group, click snap, and I will snap it to a face point here is fine. And using the PMP command, I can drag the component along that plane and move it right about there. That looks fine. So now, let's teach a robot a path around this component's seams. So I'll go to the Program tab, and I'll use the Jog command to select the robot in the 3D world. And for the robot, you can define a tool center point first if you want. It is optional, because when you create a path statement, you have the option of choosing what base frame and tool center point to use. So with the robot, I can go to the Jog panel, go to the Tool option here, and select Weld Tip. And this is imported from the torch that's mounted to the robot. But remember, this step is optional. So now, we want to position the part for welding. So let's start by moving the part over here and rotating it. And I will make this a point-to-point -point motion statement in the robot. So in the Program Editor panel, I'll add a point-to-point -point motion statement. And when I reset the simulation and run it again, we can see now the part is moved over here. So let's now teach a path along this seam in the part. So it's the seam between this face and this face in the part. In the Program Editor panel, I will click this icon to add a path statement. And notice this opens the Select Curve Task pane over here. So you can first decide what you want to pick, either edges or curves or both. And notice when I move the mouse pointer, over objects in the 3D world, I get a preview that's highlighted yellow. And this indicates what you can select for the path statement. So notice I can select this seam here, this edge, or even this gap here. So notice when you move the mouse, you can also affect the tool center points orientation. So I want to be facing down. And now when I click this seam, notice it changes from yellow to purple. And that indicates I have selected it and we also get these black dots that indicates the points in the path. So if you want to change the density of points, you can go to the Select Curve Task pane, and under Point Density, we can change the max distance to be, uh, let's try 100 first. Seems we got some points, but let's now change this to 10. And yeah, buddy, now we get a lot more points. If you want to see the coordinate axis for each point, you can go to the Motion Parameters section here in the Select Curve Task pane, and what I mentioned earlier, you can define the base frame and tool frame for this path, which you have selected, the speed, approach axis. And if I select the show original curve, we can see 
based on how far away we are from the object, we get those coordinate frames showing the x, y, and z coordinates for the positions. And notice the tool push direction is along the x-axis by default. If you want, you can offset the path from the seam. So if we go to our curve offset section here, we can do a normal offset, a side offset, or an angle offset. Let's try a side offset, see what that looks like. So let's use 50. And ho ho! Notice we now have that selected curve is offset from that seam by 50. And if we change that back to 0, notice they go back to where they were before. Let's now zoom in on this curve here. So for our point density, let's try changing the angular deviation from 5 degrees to 45. And ho oh, ho! We can see instead of having that smooth transition along the curve, we get from this point to this point in our path, so we probably don't want that. So let's change the angular deviation back to 5 degrees. And that looks nice and smooth. Great. Now you can keep on selecting curves for the path statement. So I can go over here and select this curve as well. And before I select it, you can see an arrow down at the bottom left that indicates where the path will start from. So if we go to what we have selected right now, we can see our path statement is going to start over here and end over here. So now if I select this seam, we can see it's now going to go all the way over here. So it will start here and end here. So we can select this last seam here if we want. And now it seems our path autocorrected itself so it's going to start here and end at the same location. If you want you can trim the path so I can press the backspace key and that will undo what I just selected. So now we're starting back from here and I can keep on pressing the backspace to get rid of those selected curves that I added. So now let's go back and select that seam here. That looks fine. And for trimming, you can trim either the start or end of the path. So I can hold down the shift key. Notice when I hover my mouse pointer over that seam I have selected, I can get this yellow indication of where I can cut to. So I'll trim to this location here. And now the path is stopping there. Likewise, from the start of the path, I can start the path from, uh, let's say, right here. That looks good. Now we can also transition our path to go to this gap here. So if I zoom in on it, we can select all of those points. So I'll do that now. And notice our selected curves, we have this dashed line here. This indicates a flyby point or a waypoint. So the robot will go along the seam. And once it reaches this point, it knows it has to go to a joint motion all the way over here and then start moving along this curve. So these points you see here, these are linear motion statements but when the robot gets to this waypoint here, it's going to be a joint motion. So let's say I made my selection and I'm happy with all this. I can now create the curve I want for the path statement. So I can now go to my select curve task pane and I can click the generate button. And now notice I have now those robot positions. Now that I've created the path statement, I can go to these positions. So I can zoom in and select them and the robot will snap there. I can also use the arrow keys on my keyboard to go to the previous point. So I'm using the left arrow key now to go back. And I can use the right arrow key to go forward. You can also use the select command to select many points. So I can now create a selection window. And I have my selection here that's highlighted. And in the position properties, you can see I have 55 positions selected. And here are its properties. So these are linear motion statements. And you can see you can make the positions continuous, so the robot will just keep on going past them, it won't stop. You can also make them reference points, so by default the path will use the first point and the last point as reference points, and you use those reference points for smoothing and making adjustments to the path itself. So if I go to the program editor panel you can see this path, it has P1 and P168, so right now we have 168 points in this path. But if I want, I can make this point here before we go to the gap here. We can make this a reference point so I can select it in the 3D world and then select the is reference checkbox and notice it is labeled here and it's also shown under the path statement in the program editor panel. Now to edit the path, we can select the path statement itself and we can change the base frame and tool frame for all of the points. 
We can also clear the reference points of the past. So if I press this button, you can see the label for this reference point goes away in the 3D world. And in the program editor panel, you get feedback. There's no reference points right now. You can also clear the curve of everything. So that would undo what we created here. So let's actually do that now because you might make a terrible mistake and you need to redo everything. So let's clear the curve. And I still have the past statement, so I now want to select a curve. And I can go back and select the seam right here. There we go. And that's fine for now. So I will go ahead and create that. But if I want, I can reverse the path by clicking this button here. And notice now the path will start over here and end here. So let's click Generate. And now we have that path again. And if you want, you can show the labels of your reference points. So you can turn them on or off without deleting the reference points, as well as the rotational handles. And this is kind of interesting. If I go to this point here in the path, and I go back to Jog mode, you can see I have a rotational handle for the robot at this position. So I can rotate that tool along the z-axis like so. I can also do it for this point here. Oh, let me go back and select that. So I'll go to my select mode and select that point there. And now if I go to jog, I get the handle again to adjust the offset. So notice when you get around a corner, you may want to you know, edit the orientation of the robot. And you may have a question, do I have to use just one pass statement? No, you can use many. So if I was to rotate the camera, let's say I want a new pass statement for this seam. So I can probably adjust the positioner if I wanted to, to rotate this way all the way around. I could then add a new pass statement for that seam right there. But if you don't want to do that, you can, of course, remove that, delete the pass statement, go back to your original path. And for those points, remember, if you select them, you can see that they have their external joint values. So I can change this to be zero if I wanted to for that second external axis. And we can do that for the first one as well. Set that to be zero. And that's position 16. So if we zoom out and then go back to our path statement, let's see what happens. So I can go to that point and let's keep on going, keep on going. And notice, yep, we got that flip there. So now the robot knows when it goes to that position, the joint values for the external axis have to be here, but the next point or the previous point are at different external values for the joints. Now you're probably wondering what happens if I was to reset the simulation. We still have that path showing in the 3D world, so it's not going anywhere. But this, of course, depends on what base frame is used for these positions. So if I was to select the robot here as a component and then use the Move tool, when I move the robot, right now these are mapped to the robot world frame. So notice the path will move with the robot. But if I didn't want this to happen, I want to lock these positions in place you can go to the lock positions group here and then select to world. So now when I move the robot, those positions in that path are not moving. They're locked to the 3D world. But if I want to change that again, I can just select to reference and now they move with their reference frame, which right now is the robot world frame. But I can go to the path statement and then set the base frame for all those points in the path to be, uh, let's say base frame one. And if I select the robot, Go back to the jog panel and select base frame one. Let's now click the gear icon to select base frame one. And notice I'm no longer jogging the robot. I'm now moving and editing base frame one. So now those past statement, those points will move with the reference frame, which is that base frame. Okay, this completes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And I hope you have a wonderful day.